Hello, welcome to Weathers Hill Proctor Library Storytime. I'm Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian, and this is our library bear, Bear. We are here to read our next episode of the Imagine Your Story Summer Reading Series. This week's story comes to us from a different country. This story is called The Tiger and the Brahmin. It's written by Brian Gleason and it's illustrated by Kurt Vargo. I'm gonna see if you can guess what country this story comes to us from, just by looking at the cover. We'll see if you're right. I'm also gonna ask you to predict, what do you think this bamboo, oh, you're getting some glare. What do you think this bamboo is going to be used for? So, the tiger and the brahmin. All right. There is a land in the east called India. Were you right? <laughs> That's where tigers live, one of the places. It is a magical and mysterious place, and the customs of the people who live there may seem strange to an outsider. In India, everyone has a duty. The animals, too, have their duties. The rooster crows at dawn. To wake the people of the village, the farmer tills his field so that the crops may grow and the people will have something to eat. The cow gives milk for nourishment. The weaver makes the kadi cloth by spinning her wheel so that the people may have clothes to wear. The mongoose protects the people by catching the deadly cobra. The shepherd boy minds his goats so that they will grow strong and bear kids. And the merchant sells his wares at the bazaar so that he can drink tea and learn everyone's business. These are the ancient laws by which the people of India live, for in India, all things have a purpose. There was once a wise and holy man in India, a Brahmin. He was a good man who was always, who always acquired merit by performing helpful deeds for the people of his village. When a beggar asked for food, the Brahmin gave food to the poor wretch. When two men quarreled, the Brahmin made peace. When a villager required counseling, the Brahmin counseled the, consulted the heavens and gave advice that rang true. If you were to ask the Brahmin, why? He always performed good deeds, he would reply, because that is my duty. My duty is to ease suffering through compassion. It is my responsibility to, to fulfill my duty. The Brahmin was a most remarkable fellow, bringing goodwill and wisdom wherever he went. Oh, there's our bamboo. What do you see inside? One day, the Brahmin heard sobbing from under the shadow of a mango tree. He went to see who it was that cried. The Brahmin was astonished to discover a tiger trapped in a cage. The tiger wailed in the presence of the Brahmin. Oh, help me, holy one. Please let me out of the cage. Brahmin Babu, if you don't, I shall be killed and skinned for some sahib's rug. Now, the tiger's request presented a most curious problem for the Brahmin. You see, according to his holy scriptures, it was his duty to practice charity to all things great and small. But if he freed the tiger from the cage, the Brahmin might very well become the tiger's dinner. Hmm, that is a dilemma indeed, isn't it? Tiger, said the Brahmin, I would very much like to help thee. However, if I do such a thing, I am liable to be eaten. All of India knows that the tiger has a most voracious appetite. I give you assurances, cried the tiger. I shan't eat you if you let me out of the cage. I shall repay your kindness with gratitude. I swear to Vishnu that I won't eat you. The Brahmin hesitated for a moment. Tiger appears most righteous, thought the Brahmin. He is in dire straits and I must assist him. Tiger, said the Brahmin, the hand of friendship shall never 
uh, shall avert the cage of calamity. I shall set you free. With that, the Brahmin opened the door to the cage. The tiger immediately bounded out of his confinement and pounced on the unsuspecting Brahmin. He quickly wrestled the holy man to the ground and took hold of his throat. What a fool thou art, Brahmin, he roared loudly. You believe that drivel about repaying your kindness with my gratitude? Even an imbecile knows that the tiger never lets his dinner walk away. The Brahmin was petrified. Mine end is here, he thought. Oh, tiger, said the Brahmin, I was kind enough to give you your freedom. Thou repayest my... Uh, Thou repays my freedom thus? Surely this is not a just reward. What would you have me do? replied the tiger. It is my duty to sup on your bones. Do you expect me to forget my appetite because it is not just? In a manner of speaking, yes, the Brahmin said with a shiver. Brahmin, you are more foolish than I thought, said the tiger. It is not the way of the world. But I shall give you a chance, continued the tiger. Go from here and ask the first three things you meet what I should do with you. Then return to me with the answers and I will follow the advice. So the tiger set the Brahmin free. As the Brahmin shook the dust from his robe, the tiger warned him, Remember the first three things you meet and return quickly for I am getting hungrier by the minute. Do not make me come searching for you. Now, the Brahmin was certain that his good deed would not end in his being eaten. It would not be just. So, he set his face, serene and untroubled, towards the task at hand. The first thing he met was an elephant. Obeying the tiger's command to the letter, he told the elephant of his ordeal. I heard the tiger wailing under the mango tree, and he asked me to free him. He promised me that he would not eat me, but... When I freed him, he wanted to eat me. Tell me then, asked the Brahmin, dost thou think the tiger ought to eat me? Since I was a calf, my master has bound me with this iron ring around my leg, said the elephant. I can go nowhere I want because he keeps me chained. When my master rides me, he beats my back with a cane so that I will walk faster. I am a miserable servant to his every order. I am sorry for your servitude, elephant, said the Brahmin. However, my question was, what dost thou think the tiger should do with me? It is, is it not plain to you what I think, said the elephant? We must obey the orders of our masters. The tiger is your master. Face your fate and be eaten. The elephant's answer deeply troubled the Brahmin and made him sad of heart. Surely pity and compassion must exist in this world, said the Brahmin. So he continued to walk. The next thing the Brahmin encountered was the peepal tree. The Brahmin told the peepal tree his story. Tell me, asked the Brahmin, dost thou think the tiger ought to eat me? See if I can get a good picture there. What have you to complain about, Brahmin? replied the peepal tree. I give shade and shelter to everyone who passes by. And what hand of gratitude do they show me? They tear down my branches to feed their cattle. I am appalled by the way thou art abused, said the Brahmin, but what about my, my predicament? Don't whimper, admonished the peepal tree. Be a man, go back to the tiger. The world is a cruel place. The Brahmin was astonished by the peepal's point of view. He grew greatly saddened. Well, that's two of the three things. But all was not lost. He saw a water buffalo in a field turning the wheel for a well. 
The Brahmin told the water buffalo his story. Tell me, asked the Brahmin, dost thou think the tiger ought to eat me? You are a fool to expect gratitude, said the water buffalo. Look at me in my life. When I once gave milk, they fed me tender cotton seed and delicious oil cake. But now that I am dry, they yoke me here and give me garbage to eat. Is that gratitude? There is no gratitude in this world. Go to your tiger. In his, in his jaws awaits his only gratitude for you, Brahmin. Oh my goodness, this is not good news, I don't think. The Brahmin left the water buffalo and began his journey back to the tiger. The first three things he saw testified that, there, that he was to be the tiger's dinner. His fate had been decided. Surely his life had been for nothing, the Brahmin thought as he walked. He had spent his many years doing good turns for the people in his village, bestowing charity on all things great and small. He studied the holy books of India and extracted meaning. What a fool he had been to think that he was a wise man and understood the ways of the world. I am nothing more than the tiger's dinner, said the Brahmin with pain and suffering in his voice. Excuse me, holy one, said a voice from behind the Brahmin. What is this you speak about? Sorry, I have a little trouble with the glare. You want to eat the tiger for dinner? The Brahmin turned to see who it was that spoke to him. <laughs> he looks a little confused. There he saw a jackal. No, said the Brahmin, I do not want to eat the tiger for dinner. The tiger will eat me for dinner. But that is strange, said the jackal. Does not the tiger know that the meat of the holy man is always tough and full of gristle? That is beside the point, the Brahmin said sadly. I freed the tiger from a cage and now he wants to eat me. That is most problematical, said the jackal. But tell me, holy one, why did you free him from the cage? The Brahmin was getting weary of this jackal and all his questions. Because I let the tiger out of the cage, he promised, oh, before I let the tiger out of the cage, he promised that he would not eat me, said the Brahmin. Brahmin Babu, said the jackal, scratching his head. This is most confusing to me. I must sit down and decipher this conundrum. What a great word, conundrum. Oh, there he is sitting down. <laughs> the jackal sat on the road to think. He crossed his legs and put his chin on his paws. He grew deep in thought. Suddenly, a look of confusion overcame the jackal's face. Pardon me, holy one, said the jackal. This is quite perplexing. Would you mind explaining it to me once again? There he is looking perplexed. So the Brahmin again told the story of the tiger in the cage and how he freed the beast. And when he came to the part where the tiger wanted to eat him, the jackal shrieked, Yow! There it goes again, cried the jackal. I simply can't understand the story. The story seems to go in one of my ears and out the other. I've decided, said the jackal, take me to the place where this most unfortunate event occurred. I will better understand it there. And so, there we go. The Brahmin and the Jackal went to the tiger who lay in front of the cage, sharpening his teeth and claws. It is about time, Brahmin, the tiger roared. You have kept me waiting for our dinner. Our dinner, said the Brahmin, as his knees knocked together and his teeth chattered. It is a most delicate way you have spoke it. Come, Brahmin, growled the tiger. Let us begin eating. One moment, please, said the Brahmin. We have a most curious visitor who insists on certain knowledge. Qu 
Quite frankly, his persistence is getting under my skin. It seems that I've explained my situation to him and he is unable to understand, said the Brahmin. So before our dinner, I thought I could better show him uh, with you and the cage before us. The Brahmin went to the tiger and whispered, This will not take long. The jackal is dim-witted and certainly it would not be just to brush him aside. The tiger groaned and begrudgingly consented to the request. There's our confused jackal. So the Brahmin began to tell the story once again. The Brahmin did not miss a single detail. Spinning the very longest of yarns. Oh, my poor brain, squealed the jackal, squeezing his head with his paws. Oh, my poor brain, I simply cannot understand the particulars of this tale. The tiger rolled his eyes back in his head. Surely this jackal lacks cleverness, the tiger thought. Let me see if I have this correctly, continued the jackal. The Brahmin was in the cage and the tiger came walking by. No, you fool, roared the tiger. I was in the cage. Is your head filled with camel dung? Oh, yes, sire, said the jackal, trembling with fright. I have a most tremendous amount of camel dung in my head. Now I think I understand the story. So the jackal continued with yet another version of the tale. The tiger and the Brahmin are in the cage together, and the tiger comes walking by. Ah, uh, but wait, how can the tiger be in the cage and outside the cage at the same time? One cannot occupy two places in space simultaneously. Surely that is not normal. The tiger was getting angrier by the second. Clearly this jackal was a lunatic and he was delaying the tiger's dinner. You idiot, bellowed the tiger. How can you be so stupid, jackal? Don't mind me, sire, said the jackal to the tiger. Begin your dinner, for I shall never understand. Yes, you will understand, the tiger roared. I will make you understand. Look, here at me, I am the tiger. Yes, sire, replied the jackal, and that is the cage. Yes, sire. I was in the cage, said the tiger. Understand? Yes, sire. I mean, no, sire. I mean, what do you mean, sire? I mean, I was in the cage, said the tiger. But how did you get in the cage? asked the jackal. Why, the usual way, of course, hollered the tiger. Oh, it is my head again, wailed the jackal. I just cannot seem to understand it. Please do not be angry with me, sire. Just answer, what is the usual way? Oh, do you think this jackal is as foolish as the tiger thinks? The tiger had finally lost what little patience he possessed. So he jumped into the cage and declared, this way, you fool. Now you understand now? Perfectly, said the jackal. And no sooner had the word left his mouth than the jackal shut the door of the cage, trapping the tiger once again. Now, said the jackal to the Brahmin, if you permit me to say so, I think we shall have the tiger in the cage this time. I think we shall leave the tiger in the cage this time. The Brahmin looked on in awe. <laughs> There's the tiger looking out. Free me at once, ordered the tiger. You cannot leave me here, holy one. I have pity for you, tiger, said the Brahmin. Perhaps when you are a sahib's rug, you will learn gratitude. And now I bid thee farewell. So the Brahmin and the jackal left the tiger in the cage, still screaming for mercy. You are most clever, said the Brahmin to the jackal. You have taught me a lesson 
that I never found in my holy books. You flatter me, holy one, said the jackal. Now I must go. And with that, the jackal left the Brahmin and scampered down the road out of the village. As for the Brahmin, he continued studying the holy scriptures and acquiring merit by helping all things great and small. But he lived the rest of his life a much wiser man. As a result of the cleverness of the jackal and the deceit of the tiger, the Brahmin had learned the ways of the world. For in India, all things have a purpose. And that is the end of The Tiger and the Brahmin, written by Brian Gleason and illustrated by Kurt Vargo. I hope you enjoyed that story. And I'm going to show you and there the craft that you're going to make. We are going to start with the paper bag that your materials come in. And in that bag, there'll be a sheet of orange paper and a sheet of black paper. And there'll be some white paper as well that you'll need. So besides that, you'll need a glue stick and a pair of scissors. If you're not good at cutting, get some help from a parent. Make sure you have permission to use scissors and you'll need a black marker. And guess what you're gonna make? You are going to make your own tiger puppet. 